All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to draw the free body diagram for an object that's uh, placed on an inclined plane. The blue triangle represents the inclined plane, and it could be something like a loading ramp or something of that sort. We usually indicate the inclined plane as having an incline of so many degrees, and when we do, that would be this angle here at the bottom. Sometimes instead of giving you the angle of inclination, they'll give you this distance here, the height, and then this distance here, the length of the incline. If they do, then of course you can use inverse sign to find the angle theta. But generally speaking, I'll give you the angle. So, with any object, there's always a gravitational force exerted, so I will draw it starting from the center of the object and this is F grav, and of course the formula for F grav is mg. So I'll write that here on my diagram. Now that vertically down gravitational force can be broken down into two components, but this time instead of being X and Y components, we call them the perpendicular and parallel components. In other words, F perpendicular would be that component of the gravitational force that acts perpendicular to the incline. So this is called F perpendicular. And then this component, starting at the tip of the F perpendicular, we draw the F parallel component. Now, you'll notice that this is where the right angle is. These are the two components, perpendicular components, that make up the F graph. So if I added F perpendicular plus F parallel tip to tail, the resultant would be the F gravitational. So be sure that you draw it with this as your right angle. Basically, when you're drawing F perpendicular, you don't bring it down as far as the gravitational force comes, because if you do, then the perpendicular and parallel will not work out. So be sure that it looks like this. This angle should look like a right angle. It may not be exact, but it should be fairly close. Now, an interesting part of geometry is if you look at this piece right here, you can watch the little going. That is a right triangle, and we know that this angle here and this angle here are complementary angles because the acute angles of a right triangle add up to 90 degrees. So whatever this angle is, is 90 minus theta. Now if I look at this angle and this angle, they have to add up to 90 degrees because F perpendicular is perpendicular to the incline. So this angle here will always be the same angle as theta. And the reason for that is because it is a complement of this angle here and theta is a complement of it. And in geometry we know that complements of the same angle are congruent. So this angle will always be equivalent to the angle of the incline. Now looking at that triangle made up of F grav, F perpendicular, and F parallel, we can get the formulas for F perpendicular and F parallel. F perpendicular is adjacent to theta, and so I would use my cosine function. So F perpendicular is equal to F grav times the cosine of theta, or you could say mg cosine theta. Down here, F parallel is the side opposite theta, and so I could say it's equal to F grav times the sine of theta. Or if I wanted to, I could say Mg sine theta. So now I've broken down my gravitational force into its two components, F perpendicular and F parallel. But we also have, because there is a supporting surface, we know that we have a normal force. 
And we must remember that the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So if it's a horizontal surface, and only if it's a horizontal surface, the F norm will be a vertical vector. But in this case, the surface is not horizontal, and so to make my F norm, it's going to be perpendicular to the surface. So in other words, F norm is going to cancel out or be equal to F perpendicular. So we know what F norm is. If we find F perpendicular to be the same value. Now one thing that I always recommend that students do, and this is really the diagram of the forces here, but to make it easier to understand what the net force is acting on the block itself, I always recommend that you take F parallel from down here and simply redraw it on the block. I'm not creating a new vector, I'm just redrawing it up here. Okay, so in this case, if there were no frictional forces, then the net force is F parallel. So if frictionless, we know F net equals F parallel equals mg sine theta. Now we also know that F net is equal to MA. So F net equals F parallel, MA is equal to F parallel, so MA is equal to MG sine theta. And look at that, we've got mass on both sides and it cancels out and so the acceleration on an inclined plane when there is no friction is equal to g sine theta. If you think about it, this is sort of reminiscent of dropping a heavy object and a light object and they both have the same acceleration assuming that there's no air resistance. Well, here we have an inclined plane with no friction sort of like no air resistance, and it, you'll notice that the mass of the object does not play a role in what the acceleration would be. So remember that uh, the acceleration of an object on a frictionless inclined plane does not depend on its mass. Now, let's take another example. Same sort of situation, but this time we will have friction. So if I go to this diagram, in which I've already drawn all my forces just to make it a little faster to discuss what happens with friction. So I still have my angle theta and my angle theta just like before. My F grav, my F perpendicular is still F grav cosine theta. F parallel, notice how I've drawn tip to tail. If you don't put hours on these vectors, you haven't drawn a vector diagram and you're not going to get any points. So be sure that you show which direction the vectors are pointing. And here is F parallel, which is F graph sine theta. And then I simply moved this F parallel from here up to here. And my F norm is going to be equal to F graph. So I'm going to write equals F graph. Now in this case you can see that I have drawn a frictional force. So if I'm not pushing or pulling on the block, I'm just letting it sit there and start sliding on its own, then the object obviously is going to be pulled down the incline by F parallel, but friction is going to act in the opposite direction or up the incline. So let's see what happens. Remember we do know that F friction is equal to the coefficient of friction, and we'll talk about the sliding or kinetic friction, times F norm. 
So I can calculate the force of friction if I know the coefficient of friction and F norm. But remember, F norm is always going to be equal to, oh, I said F grab. It should have been F perpendicular here, which is equal to Mg cosine theta. So the force of friction can be found if I know uh, the coefficient of friction and I can calculate F perpendicular because F perpendicular and F norm will always be the same. Alright, so we've got several possibilities here. If, and I'll do this three different ones, if F friction is less than F parallel, your directional, your net force is going to be down the incline. So F net is down the incline. Thus, object speeds up as it slides down the incline. So that's one possibility, if the frictional force is less than the parallel force. Then we could have, if the frictional force is equal to F parallel, then F net is zero. So object slides down the incline at a constant speed. And then finally we have if F friction is greater than F parallel, then F net is up the incline. And if object is already sliding, down the incline, it will slow down. So we have three possibilities when we look at the frictional force and the parallel force. If friction is less, the net force is down, so you gain speed sliding down. If they're equal, the net force is zero, so the box just slides down at constant velocity. And then if F friction is greater than F parallel, and suppose you have already pushed the box and it's already been sliding, it's going to start slowing down because of friction. Now, we also can have forces applied to the box, but uh, that would take a little bit more explaining, and we'll look at some of those later on in class. So keep in mind when you're drawing your forces that this angle at theta and this angle between the gravitational and the perpendicular force will always be the same. And then you're using right triangle trig to get the formulas for parallel and perpendicular forces. And you know that the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So instead of being equal to F grab, it would be equal to F perpendicular.